Namaskar, warm greetings from DelNet Developing Library Network, New Delhi, India, and NIT University, Neem Rana, Rajasthan, India. Distinguished Dr. Parimal V. Manke, Vice President, NIT University, Shri K. Jai Kumar, President, DelNet, Dr. S. S. Murthy, Vice President, DelNet, Dr. P. R. Goswami, Treasurer, Esteemed speakers of today's webinar session, Dr. Yogendra Pal, Assistant Professor, Educational Technology, NIT University, Neem Rana, Rajasthan. Dr. Vinay Kanthola, in charge librarian, NIT University, Neem Rana. Well-known national and international library experts, institutional heads, library and information science professionals, computer science and IT professionals, educational administrators, faculty, researchers, scholars, officials from NIT University, my colleagues at Delnet New Delhi and also its coordination units at Bangalore, Hyderabad, Pune, ladies and gentlemen. I, Dr. Sangeeta Kaul, Director Delnet, on behalf of Delnet Developing Library Network New Delhi and NIT University Neem Rana, extends a warm hearty welcome to each one of you for joining us today from different parts of India and many other countries across the globe, including Bhutan, Bangladesh, Cameroon, Indonesia, Korea, Liberia, Malaysia, Morocco, Nigeria, Pakistan, Philippines, Sri Lanka, UAE, USA, and Uzbekistan to today's webinar on create educational videos using open broadcaster software, OBS, which will shortly be delivered by Dr. Yogendra Pal, Assistant Professor, Educational Technology, NIT University, Neem Rana, Rajasthan. We are much grateful to each one of you for your overwhelming response as more than 1,700 participants have registered for this webinar session from across the globe. We feel much humbled with your very, very kind uh, interest in this webinar today. At the very outset, on behalf of Dell Net Developing Library Network, we would like to express our very warm sincere gratitude and thanks to the entire management at NIT University, our very special gratitude and thanks to the president and vice president, NIT University Neem Prana, for acceding to our request in uh, collaborating uh, you know, with uh, Dell Net in organizing today's webinar session. We are much thankful to the distinguished speaker, Dr. Yogendra Palji, for acceding to our request to deliver the invited talk. We are much grateful to you, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much uh, for taking our time for us and with your very, very hectic, busy, you know, academic schedule. You have been able to accommodate our request. We remain truly appreciative of that. We are also much appreciative of the support and coordination extended by Dr. Binek and Kula, a longtime professional colleague, you know, over the years, who is also the library charge at NIT University Neem Rana. Thank you very much, Dr. Vinay, for you know, your tireless efforts and seeing to it that we all are together here today at this platform. I take immense pleasure in introducing the distinguished speaker, Dr. Yogendra Paul, a PhD from IIT Mumbai, an assistant professor in educational technology at NIT University at Neem Rana. He has seven years of experience in industry, research and academia, his teaching and research areas focus on the use of information and communications technology to impart education, especially to teach computer programming to non-English speaking students. He has in fact has been producing videos to teach programming to Hindi speakers on YouTube channel Learn by Watch since 2009. Prior to joining uh, NIT University, Dr. Paul worked as a project research scientist in the computer science and engineering department at IIT Bombay wherein he managed the front end of IIT Bombay's MOOC platform, IIT Bombay X using Drupal. Previously, after completing his PhD in 2016, he launched a YouTube channel, ET Mantra, to provide training and support to teachers for developing educational content. He began his career as a project engineer in CDAC Mumbai after completing his master's degree in CSC in 2009. Dr. Paul brings his varied experience of working in industry, research and teaching, along with his expertise in running his own contents channel uh, to uh, the current, you know, his uh, engagement at uh, NIT University Neem Prana. He has a wide experience in industry, research and teaching, and he has been uh, also, uh, you know, undertaking the courses in advanced productivity tools, mobile learning and applications, and C programming. His main areas of research includes educational technology, learning analytics, instructional design, bilingual education, educational video creation, scaffolding creation for vernacular medium learners, content chunking and sequencing, distance education, e-learning assessment and evaluation, use of stories in education, mentorship, and many more. 
He also has been offering a consultancy in varied uh, areas of his specialization, including implementing edtech solutions in educational institutions and corporates, teaching bilingual students, effective educational content development, and many more. He has also set up the state-of-the-art e-classrooms and e-conference halls for Central University of Rajasthan, and has also helped the Central University of Rajasthan to draft a document on technical specifications of equipment required for setting up of e-classrooms and an e-conference hall way back in 2021. He has been a prolific academic writer who has been contributing immensely to various national and international journals and has been organizing a large number of conferences and workshops. He has also uh, done the development of training material. Uh, he has developed, it was published uh, on the following, uh, on the varied training modules on the YouTube channels, Learn by Watch. And I think each one of us post this program today may definitely be wanting, you know, to have, which includes my interaction with C programming in 15 hours course, Yogi's Guide to Drupal 7 Basic. And he has been immensely contributing. It's not only to tell you that how to create, but he has also himself been an expert in your specialization, has immensely been contributing, you know, by letting others to know what or in which you know he specializes himself. It's a profound privilege and honor to have you with us, Dr. Yogendra Pal. We are indeed much grateful on behalf of each one of us. Uh, we remain truly grateful to you for sparing time for us this afternoon. I would now like to have immense pleasure in introducing Dr. Vinay Kanthola, who is in charge library at uh, NIT University Neem Runner. And uh, Dr. Vinay Kanthola has been uh, a professional, you know, having more than nearly 20, more than two decades of experience that he has been holding. And he has been serving at NIT University Neem Rana for almost a decade now, since April 2014. He has been the in charge library and information center. I'm also very happy and proud to share with you all that uh, Dr. Vinay Kanthola has been bestowed with the Academic Council of ULEX, uh, recognized him as one of the top 50 eminent librarians in India for the year 2020, for which we heartily congratulate uh, Dr. Kanthola. Uh, Dr. Vinay has been, uh, you know, uh, spearheading a number of uh, projects, you know, wherever in the, in the various libraries that he has been, and just to name a few, he has been instrumental in implementing Koha, uh, Implementers Island, EG Parshala, Shibboleth, an open source remote access tool and e-content platform at NIT University. Under his guidance, the uh, NIT University has also taken advantage of e Shod Sindhu, Shod Ganda, uh, Shod Sudhi, uh, National Digital Library, and many more. Uh, he also has a great exposure of the ICT, and he has been the one who has been uh, also, you know, uh, taking care uh, taking care of the basis class. You know, way back, this reminds us of a long time association since the late 1990s, wherein he was instrumental in implementing basis plus and tech plus, especially in the libraries, including at NIFM uh, Faridabad, and uh, and he has been immensely contributing to the libraries, you know, for the years altogether. It's always a profound privilege and honor to have an association and to get his, uh, you know, uh, the cordial support for the Dell Net activities. We're also very happy to mention that uh, NIT University Neem Rana has been one of our most distinguished esteemed member institution of Delhi for the years altogether. So thank you very much, Dr. Vinay, and we welcome you once again to this program today. We all are living in the world of connections and collaborations. The LIS professionals have greater responsibilities now than ever before to build up the authentic collections, assist in creating the valuable content, and strengthen the connections. We need to tap the tacit knowledge of the domain knowledge experts. We are in the midst of an open world wherein we have an open publishing, open collaborations, open source softwares and open access. The open mantra is the mantra to be followed to stay relevant in today's day and time. Today's webinar is a forward looking step taken by the organizers to apprise and sensitize about each one of you about creating educational videos using open broadcaster software. We are also here to please to share with you all that Dellit has quite recently developed and launched Vision Portal Video Sites Online, Video Lectures Online, which contains educational video lectures delivered by the domain knowledge experts. And we are immensely happy to see that from our member institutions, we are receiving a large number of video lectures. So it would be in fitness of things like, you know, that we make the best use of the open source technologies and we have the best of the expert here with us today. Dr. Yokinder Pal, who is going to take 
us and make us all aware about this. I would firstly would like to request now Dr. Vinay Kanthula to kindly deliver an introductory address. It's uh, over to you, Dr. Vinay. I request you, uh, Dr. Vinay. Um. Uh, thank you very much, uh, ma'am. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, extend my sincere thanks to you uh, for providing an opportunity to share um, uh, this knowledge about the open broadcaster software. Because actually, at an IT university, Nimrana, we just we focus on the open source software. And I would like to tell you that we, because migrated from the you know paid software. Uh, in 2016 and you know implemented uh, Koha successfully and now we are in 23 and our software is working fine absolutely fine and we have you know updated it many times and we have used its you know uh, opaque uh, and as a portal to disseminate information among our, our user so similarly in this is because actually I was you know uh, discussing with the uh, professor uh, Yogendra Pal about the you know uh, the open source software so and uh, because you uh, know he has joined as a you know uh, professor in the uh, education technology department and he is having lots of knowledge so because well, i thought that why because why we should restrict uh, this information to our user because we should you know uh, share this information with everyone and that we you know coordinated with uh, ma'am and thanks to ma'am uh, you, uh, you know allowed us to share this information now i would like to thank uh, our uh, management also and dr yogendra pal because who because when i you know discussed this uh, uh, topic with him and he immediately reacted okay no problem i will share the information with universe and uh, because i told him that it's a, you know that's a, it's a, you know a platform where uh, you know uh, only we can uh, we do not get any money or we because only you, you can share the information he said that because i am very happy that this information will be you know telecast broadcast to everyone and i am happy that uh, the users will be able to use the uh, obs so actually you know see uh, the practical part will be discussed by the uh, uh, professor dogendra pal but because there are some points which i would like to share with you because these are the you know highlights of my you know, uh, note so uh, see uh, why obs because why we should use this software not only because it's an open source software because it has you know many features which are not available in the uh, paid software and second thing is that it's a it has got the gnu general public license so uh, you can if you want to ch make changes you can make changes and then you know that uh, it's a cost effectiveness so because uh, instead of you know investing money in uh, the uh, broadcasting software you can uh, use this software and you can use that money uh, for uh, you know buying other uh, resources of library especially uh, if you are working in a academic uh, library okay then you know see the advantage uh, of uh, having obs is that it uh, it is you no know, uh, you can work with windows mac and linux all operating systems uh, you know can be used then second uh, most important uh, you know, uh, point is that got it has you know got uh, support from the youtube and facebook and i would like to tell you that youtube facebook logic tech uh, you know these are the you know big companies these are you know helping uh, uh, the obs in developing and you know in uh, buying the uh, tools and in, in buying the you know and helping their uh, software developer so and that you know that twitch is also uh, helping them twitch most probably actually uh, it's a uh, use in the us countries as a tv channel gaming channel lots of you know channels are there then twitter and mixer or you can add. so uh, these platforms are using uh, the obs so uh, that's why you can say that how useful is this software then you know that uh, today because the uh, 29.1.2 uh, uh, version is available and however it's in you know it's a better version and it is available to only youtube so however the other version are also available and it can be easily downloaded from the site uh, given their obsproject.com uh, any user can download and you will get that different type of you know link for downloading the windows mac and linux 
just like other software so why you know what is the purpose behind using the obs because you know see that we have seen that during pandemic you know uh, during pandemic uh, you know technology played a very you know significant role because those who are uh, having the advantage or technique they could use they could disseminate information uh, especially i'm talking about the uh, academics because all the students were the student the faculty members they were all off campus but if the institute are having the advantage of technology so so they could uh, provide access and they could share the learning uh, videos with their students and that helped you know uh, because however the other softwares are also there so and if if the open uh, resource uh, software is available there then you can easily use it you know there is no purchasing because however you know what uh, users uh, uh, purchase some software and that process took time but if you are having such you know uh, software in uh, your uh, university then you can easily you know help your students and faculty members then basically it is used for the recording if you are now recording is you know uh, important everywhere whether you are working in corporate on or, or in the in a university or uh, in the library setup because actually if you want to record something for and you want to showcase something then you can use this software this software is so easy is easy and user friendly you can even a layman can also use videos are there you can use simply uh, you know uh, watch these these videos and you can use this software then live streaming live streaming is there are many other software but this software is wonderful and then you know that content creation now you know that uh, you know there are many uh, you know contents are available there epg parts and many more contents are there and you can you just go to the uh, youtube uh, lots of contents are there so you can upload you can you can you know you can create a content and you can share with the masses and that content uh, can be used by the masses so uh, so basically the uh, these are the three purpose uh, purposes for using the obs recording live streaming and the content creation see uh, now i would like to share the some important features because at least see uh, um, it's not only the uh, uh, software which can be used in uh, the in the universities on even it can be used in the it can be used in the in, in the corporate and you if you want to develop a pro, uh, professional content or you you are in the you know a specific profession then you can use this software this software is very helpful because you, if the feature of this software is that obvious that uh, you can uh, capture the screen you can you know uh, use the um, uh, uh, webcam uh, and you can use the image image also and uh, most important point that you can you know share all content uh, in a single session and you can also customize these scenes and the sources you are suppose you are taking a class you want to and uh, you are giving a presentation while giving presentation you want to show many many uh, many clippings or many images so you can mix them and the because i am explaining only theoretical part so dr yoginder will uh, you know explain you how it can be done how it is useful while teach especially teaching during because it's a very helpful in the learning and teaching process then you know that uh, no it has got the uh, powerful api you know, and that helps you know uh, this software and you know the advantage of using this software is that uh, like other you know open source software like kova and d space so expert help is available there a community is there even they have created a help portal just go there and uh, they are in, they are you know investing lot in testing and development just go there just uh, just leave your question and immediately they will help if you need any help and some you know the developers uh, are you know, uh, you know leaving their scripts there you can use those scripts while using it and you can customize you know uh, this software for as per your requirement then unlimited number of scenes you know you can uh, use while you know uh, using it and you can switch uh, to these you know scenes uh, as per your requirement so uh, so because this was the theoretical part because actually i would not to um, i would not like to take much time because actually the i know that the second part that is the practical part of this session that is very important and uh, Dr. Yogendra Pal is having a you know uh, very uh, great experience, and uh, you know he 
the session will be useful for all of us so uh, over to you ma'am thank you very much uh, for providing this opportunity thank you very much uh, dr vinay for introducing us all you know to this wonderful software and we are much uh, thankful to you for uh, bringing together all this content and uh, to let us know and we all eagerly you know now look forward to getting the most insightful you know uh, talk you know about the software and they could never be anyone else better than dr yogendapal who is being you know working on the software for long and having such a you know a great experience in educational technologies it's a profound privilege and honor for me now dr yogendapal ji to request you to kindly let us all or each one of us are eagerly now looking forward to hearing from you it's over to you dr paul thank you very much ma'am uh, first of all uh, it's my honor to present my knowledge uh, to all of you thank you very much delnet for giving me this opportunity thank you vinay sir for connecting me with ma'am and delnet so that today i am fortunate to share the knowledge with all of you uh, what i am going to talk about today i am going to talk about educational video creation so although my sessions are usually practical but i thought why not simply share some of the ideas also about why you should do it although now it's not a mystery why you should also um, use educational videos in any scenario but let's simply see how we can what's the procedure okay so uh, first the question that people ask me when they want to start with the educational video is how to start creating content it seems very easy see video making is not a big deal nowadays childs are making videos and you can see um, people below 25 or 23 years of age are earning in millions just because they have one skill and that is how to create videos isn't it so we all have examples but when it comes to academics we have to be very very careful we can't simply go out in public and shout out about about our knowledge no it's that's not going to work in academics we have to be very careful because in academics quality lies in content not in production okay so production is very easy you just need to put more money into the production and you will get really good product okay but that's not going to solve teachers problem because at the end content is something that will be consumed and content will give knowledge to the students okay so you means all the educators are here so educators has to only think in terms of content quality although today i am going to cover how you can present your content better and exactly in the shape that you wanted okay but still i am saying please focus on your content and then only you think about production okay so that's why the first thing that i say whenever you want to start with content creation please start with audio and there are reasons why i am saying it okay i hope my slide is visible so why why should you start with audio you should start with audio because in audio you have to handle only one media when we are talking about video you have to handle two media minimum maybe three media sometimes when you want to put your slides also in your video but when you are talking only in terms of audio you have to handle only one media so you will learn a very useful skill that's media management okay with only one type of media and it will give you everything like record edit deliver in audio also you have to do this the only difference is the simplest it's simplest way to uh, bring your ideas to the public and there are market places that accept your audio i believe many of you are listening to um, amazon service audible then there is kuku fm so these are the one which are known but there are many in fact you can start your own podcast you can start your own podcast very easy simply 
download an application that allow you to start your podcast record audio try to edit it and then put it on your podcast that's all and your audio will be available to apple itunes to google podcast to many other applications like pocket fm okay it will be available there so what do you have to do you have to simply watch one of my video because this session is very concise i have only one hour to deliver my information so i will take you directly to the video part but podcasting is something that you should start if you're really serious about making educational content please start with audio there is marketplace that is known as podcast you have many podcasting services that allow you to publish your own audio does not really matter what is the quality focus on content quality your content should not be wrong that's all okay very easy to do you have your smartphone a smartphone as an audio recorder put just click on that button record whatever you want to record make sure that if this is your mic let's say this is your mic correct you put your uh, mic like this okay mic towards your mouth then speak in normal voice don't shout if you will shout the quality of audio will be Poor. but if you will not shout if you just speak in your normal tone then it will be really really good finally stop recording and then submit your audio to the pocket fm and many other applications and that's all so this is one video that you all should watch it's available on my youtube channel et mantra and you will start very soon okay so i just wish that you start today but let's continue what after podcast okay there are some podcasts also that i have selected teachers are actually doing it but let's now continue with the educational video part okay so now i have categorized videos one which are suitable for beginners so as i told you the scaffolding that is required audio will give you that you will know media management okay but let's again when we have to simply jump to videos let's start with the beginner friendly videos okay what are those these three types of videos are very easy one is table top video second one is a screen cast video and third one is slide cast video what is table top video table top video is basically when you want to write and you present your writing in your video okay so usually you take a paper and a pen and you want to record it then comes a screen cast a screen our computer screen or laptop screen or mobile screen recording that screen and all the activities of that screen are known as a screen cast very important when you are giving training about any software and programming and also then comes slide cast slide cast is basically for theory or concept when you are you want to capture your slides right now what we are doing i am presenting my slide to you that's a slide cast only difference is that i am not recording but i am broadcasting correct so all these three types of videos are very easy to make and obs can help you obs and can help you with any kind of production okay let's now talk about table top video okay. i have already explained what is table top i have made a proper video how you can create table top but here i want to give you example okay so what's uh, there is one example this video is recorded by one of my friend mr rajkumar thenwa and i would like to play this video and you will see if you make table top video this will be your final outcome so let me play so this is table top video i believe many of you would like to make this kind of video so uh, it's very easy to make okay so i'll show you how you can actually make it for that i have to open obs so this is obs interface or open broadcaster software it is known as open broadcaster software when you open it for the first time it looks like this it looks really complex isn't it there is no simple menu there are many things on the screen but it i'll make it very simpler for you okay all you have to do is focus on only on this screen this black screen okay whatever will appear within this rectangle that will be converted to a video 
this is a simple funda okay so anything you put here will become a view so what do you want to put here when we are talking about educational video especially table top video where we want to record while we are writing for that you need camera you just need one camera that's all okay so i already have a camera using which i am interacting with you and that camera is a usb camera that's not normal default laptop camera why i need a movable camera i need a movable camera because i have to put it perpendicular to the table top let's say this is our table surface okay our paper is here and i want to write it so our camera will focus towards table okay it should not focus towards me so right now the camera is focusing towards me but this camera that i am using particularly has a property that i can rotate it okay so if i rotate it it will show you the table surface and now i am going to rotate it see i am rotating it so you can see this is table surface right okay although this is coming to my laptop but i can further rotate it but that's not an issue the only thing is you just need to learn one thing and that one thing is how to put that camera's output to your screen that's all okay um so any one of you when as sir or ma'am if you can just open your video then i will be much comfortable because i don't know if i am audible to everyone or not yeah that's so uh, uh, dr paul we have deliberately switched it off so that you know those who are accessing you know those who are there online they will find it easier because of the bandwidth you know so that's the reason you are very much you are very much uh, you know with rapt attention we are listening to you okay. thanks so in obs you just need to learn one skill that one skill is how to use your camera in obs that's all once you know that the second thing is you just need to know how to put your camera perpendicular to your table top so first we will learn how to use camera in obs for that you just need to have a camera connected to your laptop isn't it your laptop has a default camera that's perfectly fine right now i am also going to do that one i am going to use my default laptop camera and put it on this screen for that you need to so i am now coming to the second point this obvious screen looks little uh, uh full with many tools but it's not first thing you need to know about it and second thing is sources you just need to know about the sources in sources pane you see this plus icon this plus icon tells you that you can add a new source and that source will be visible in this space that's all and this is space anything with is there in this space will be converted to your video so let me now click on plus and now i see a, a lot of options the many options now although i want to be very very focused towards using video camera in my uh video okay so for that there is one option video capture device there are many options right now please don't look at those video capture device and i'll click on it when i click on it it shows me one screen it simply want me to give a name to this video camera for the simplicity you can give it a name right now i am giving it a name laptop default camera okay and i'll click on okay but before i am clicking okay i just want to ensure that source is visible it should not be hidden otherwise it will be available in your source list but it will not be visible to you and it will not be captured in your final video so i'll ensure that the make source visible is true and now i'll click on okay by doing it it will present all the cameras which are connected to my laptop and right now i am connected with many cameras okay in my university there are more than uh, 14 classrooms in each classroom there are two cameras and i am connected with all the cameras as of now okay but i know exactly which is my camera which is my default laptop camera and that is integrated camera so i'll click on this integrated camera and now you can see if you are connected with the correct camera it will start showing you the preview from that camera there is one more camera using which i am interacting with you on webinar 
that one is c922 pro stream webcam i will use another tool to make it everything make everything visible to you so let me just open that tool as well okay now you see right now i am using integrated camera but i have a long list of cameras and this camera c922 pro stream webcam this one i prefer a lot and i am using it to interact with you on web you need to know one thing that you can use your audio device basically mic into multiple softwares but you cannot use your video camera in multiple softwares at a time so if i select this camera it will not be visible okay it may freeze it may show blank space why because right now this camera is engaged in webinar unless i free this camera from webinar that i am going to do right now right now you cannot see my video on your web isn't it what i am going to do i am going to switch to a different camera different webcam so that i can connect with you yet i can use my high quality camera to talk about uh, obs so i am again going to switch to another camera which is high quality camera and now you can see the high quality camera is visible while i am visible to you in webinar room not now but now using my default web camera so you can see the difference between the quality of two and that is why i prefer to have a different usb camera high quality usb camera those who are running with who have low budget they can go with logitech um c920 c920 please write it c920 camera and that cost only 1200 or 1400 rupees but the quality is really amazing and you can make really good quality video with that camera okay the one that i am using cost around 11000 rupees this is c922 pro stream webcam uh, so it gives little higher quality and full hd video but for normal use c920 is good enough okay so this camera is available in obs screen but the problem is that it is coming in 4 by 3 ratio and that's very common mistake teachers make they make their slides in 4 by 3 ratio they record their video in 4 by 3 ratio they take pictures in 4 by 3 ratio while all the devices if we talk about mobile device or if i talk about our uh, laptop or our tv all are 16 by 9 ratio not 4 by 3 okay so try to record to try to make media only in 16 by 9 ratio and that you can control in obs it's very easy to control using obs when your device is selected and preview is visible at that time you have to come down and look at the resolution so right now the resolution is defi device default and you cannot see further options but you have to make it custom when you make it custom you see multiple options and you have to select a ratio which is 16 by 9 so either 1920 by 1080 it's very very important that you note it should be either 1920 by 1080 which is also known as full hd or it should be 1280 by 720 which is known as hd but both ratios are 16 by 9 so i am going to select 1920 by 1080 it will make my video 16 by 9 but recording in full hd and that is what i want finally when i am satisfied with the preview i will click on okay and now you can see that in obs your source is visible i was talking about this blank space isn't it so whatever is visible here will be converted to your video and that is all you need to know when you are talking about obs so right now this is available perfect now what i was talking about how to make table talk when you want to write okay you just need to make an arrangement to put this camera that is being used in obs in per, uh, perpendicular to your table talk and for that i have already devised some mechanisms i'll show you what i use i use this arrangement okay i made it somewhere around 2012 or 13 when mr rajkumar thenu i wanted to record his videos so this was simplest device 
I would come up with you can put your mobile or your camera here then finally these two lights so that the shadow is not coming on the paper but it's going behind the hands if you look closely the hand is there but shadow is going down not it's not coming here and that's because of that arrangement so this is one arrangement that i really like and you can do the same while i discussed this during the pandemic then teachers come up with many many solutions and you can adapt any one of the solution that will make your life very easy and you will be able to record your tabletop videos today itself you can see the many options so one absolutely simple this type of tool and then there is a cut finally put your smartphone here because there is a camera correct you can use that camera as well start recording and below you can write this absolutely simple device that is available in everyone's kitchen use it this is one easiest way means simply putting your camera out of this box and finally making a video down see this is very very simple very useful mechanism teachers come up with many many ideas so i believe you will also come up with some idea to put your smartphone or camera perpendicular to your tabletop once you do that in obs right now the video is not getting recorded correct what you have to do when you are satisfied with this frame whatever is coming in this frame if you are satisfied with that what you have to do click on start record that's all when you click on the start recording the button is converted to stop recording button you can see the recording is going on and you can also see that 11 seconds of recording has been continue you can see the usage of cpu uh, when Kanthula sir was talking about that this is very resource low software it doesn't consume much of the resources although it gives you full power of using your pc to its fullest potential see cpu is just 20.3 percent is being consumed that's the power of OBS. You are doing a stuff that otherwise would cost you minimum 1.5 lakh, but you are utilizing almost no CPU and you are creating really good quality of your video. So that is how you are recording your video. Finally, you click on stop recording when you are done with your video and that's all. When you click on stop recording, the button is again converted to start recording button. And now how to watch those videos it's very simple go to file go to show recordings and all your videos that you have recorded with obs will open in a folder see this is the folder in this folder i know that the last one is today's video so i'll go to date created and this is today's video see we just created it isn't it 53 second video Frame size is this 1280 by 720, that is 16 by 9. It started recording 20 frames per second. This is the data rate. And the size is 6.78 MB, very low in size. Let's play the video to see the outcome. See, this is the final video no lag everything is fine there is only one problem and the problem is that audio is not available in this video that's the only thing that is that's the problem in this video so let's correct it it's not difficult with obs so i am going back to obs in obs when you were focused towards source and in this screen what we missed we missed this audio mixer completely See, we miss this and there is a slider there is a meter that should move when i'm speaking but it's not moving what we have to do we just need to connect our audio device that's all for that i'll click on here and then i'll look at the okay maybe not here simply go to file go to settings and look at all the audio settings which are available so it will open a window okay and now there is an audio tab in audio i have to define 
which audio device I want to use. Right now, you can see the mic was disabled and that is why audio was not recorded. So I will enable the mic. I have many mic connected to my laptop as of now. The best one is this one. Although camera also have mic, this is default laptop's mic. And this is one software that I like a lot. Okay. So I will use the best mic available to me as of now, and that is Blue Snowboyer, uh, using which I am talking to you on the webinar. And that is why the audio quality is good. That's all. I have enabled one mic. Let's click on OK. And now you can see that this meter is moving. See, this meter is now working. So that means my audio will be captured now. I just need to check when I'm speaking, it should never touch, this bar should never touch this red zone. If it is touching the red zone, then there is a problem. Otherwise it's perfectly fine. So it's never touching the red zone. And now I will do the rest. Simply start recording the video. Video is getting recorded. Audio is getting recorded. What else do we need? Nothing. So we learn how to create video with the help of camera. The only thing that you need to know now, when you want to record tabletop, you put your camera towards your lap, tabletop. Okay. When you want to record yourself, which is also known as talking head video, then you put the camera towards you. And rest the same in OBS. Once you are done, click on stop recording. Let's now look at the output. So the output is here. This is the output. You should notice one more thing and you should appreciate this that this is mp4 file the video file usually when you work with any other software you get a file that is not sharing you have to convert that into mp4 so your video editors if you ever work with them will keep telling you sir rendering is not yet done it needs this it needs that while in obs things are ready you share it right now with your students no wait correct let me now play this video and this this time we'll listen to the audio as well. Perfect. So I believe that you were able to listen to the audio, but if you will, if you did not, then let me assure there was audio. Okay. Let's now continue with the with my slide and now you know how to make tabletop as well as one difficult style that was the talking head video. Let's continue. Now I'll come to the screencast part. Okay. What is the screencast? Recording laptop screen. It's that simple. If you want, if you get my slides, you can simply click on this video and you will learn it in complete detail. But let me now just explain how you can record your screen with the help of OBS. For that, I have to come back to OBS. And what I am going to do right now, I will remove this camera. Why? Because I just want to add a screen. Or you can hide also. But let me, for the simplicity, I will remove this. Done. Now we are back to square one. Whatever we did, the way you I opened the OBS, it's still in the same shape. For a few seconds, what I will do, I will change my webcam as well. I will use my good quality webcam now on meeting because now it's not required in OBS. Let's add the source. And what source? Our laptop's screen. Done. Click on plus and just look at this list. Please tell me which one do you think is talking about screen? of laptop if you have browsed through this you might have know the power of obs the correct answer for selecting a screen of our laptop or desktop is a screen capture or display capture so i'll click on display capture and again it's asking me a name i don't want to give it any name or if you want you can give a screen it's up to you and make sure the source is visible let's click on OK. that's all when you do that it will show you preview right now you can see on my screen obs is open that's why obs is coming in this screen that's the preview now it's asking me what's the capture method 
if things are visible to you then you don't have to worry about it. but if things are not visible to you then select one of this capture method okay so it will be visible in one of that like for example in my case windows 10 option is working fine not a problem dg dxgi desktop duplication is also working and automatic is also working in your case you have to check which one is working finally comes display which one i want to display at present i have two monitors connected to my laptop so i can connect another monitor as well see right now now you are very clear correct now another monitor is visible to you and this one is the same monitor where i can see obs i can what i can do i can move obs to another screen then you will be able to see my normal screen coming here okay so once i am satisfied i have to check if i want to capture cursor or not i want to capture cursor so i'll check on it and then i'll click on okay done when i do that you can see the source is visible but size is different as i told you anything that is coming in this rectangle will be converted to a video so if you record right now what will happen you will get this black space in your final video if you don't want to do that you want your complete desktop complete monitor to be visible simply fit it to the screen that's all now you see mic is working and you click on start recording right now it is recording my computer screen along with my audio and that is what we wanted to make that's a screen cast i'll stop recording let's look at the video the video is available here let's play this video to see what is there in the video you have to notice my mouse movement are captured anything that was available on the screen was captured along with my audio but obviously we don't want to record obs we need to record something else so i wanted to teach you one software so i take this particular example let's say i want to record a video while i am teaching a software that software is known as everything and that is very very important software for any teacher any educator so software is everything and i have everything open in front of me okay what i will do now i want to teach everything so i want to record everything not obs but everything is also there in my screen so i'll start recording by ensuring that everything is fine the screen is visible uh audio is getting captured now i'll click on start recording and when i click on start recording i'll minimize obs now my screen is getting recorded obs is not on my screen the software that i want to teach is available on my screen that means the software is getting recorded along with my mouse movement along with my audio so let's now learn about this software this software is name as everything every educator every person who works with media should know this software if there is a person who says that i work with media and i manage media but i don't know everything don't believe me he he cannot manage media for you okay so everything is a software that is a search engine for your machine you can understand in this manner and it also allow you to select a particular time for example you can decide if you want if you are searching with an audio compressed files that's zip ends other kind of document executable folder picture or video so right now i want to search for something for example ppt right now i am presenting to you and i give uh, a session before i was looking for that particular slide but how to know where is that slide so i make random guesses so slide i know slides are always ppt i use powerpoint so that means slides are in ppt so i search with pptx because pptx is the new file format isn't it you know about it so i search for pptx as soon as i write pptx all the ppts are available in front of me but the problem is that all of them are not ppt some of them are simply using the name ppt in the name 
See PPT X, they are using in their name. All of them are not PPTs. Like this one is PPT, this one is PPT, this one is PPT, but not this, not this, not this, not this. Okay, so I'm not getting good result and I don't really like it. What I have to do? I am telling everything that PPT X is an extension. Extension always start with dot. So I'll put a dot in front. Okay. But I also want to tell everything that before dot, the name can be anything. So for anything means what? If we say anything means any number of letters and in any sequence, it can be X, Y, Z, it can be ABC, it can be any random number or random digit. So I simply put star. Star is a wild card. Star means any number of letters in any sequence. So basically all files that have extension PPTX will present. Now you see all the presentation are just dot PPTX. None of them is a link. See all are those only which are really PowerPoint. Now I wanted to search means because I was looking for my educational video creation slides and I was not sure which name would have I have used. So I thought, okay, why not simply write video? So before I start, I say video. But that says what? That says the slide name must start with video. And after that, any number of letters after, which is not true. So what I wanted to search video anywhere in the name in the beginning in the between or in in the at the end so i say before video also i put a star so that means any letters but then their video then again any letter in any sequence and finally pptx file so i got all the list of the uh, presentation where video was being used and finally i found this and then i finally i did it, did it similarly this is how i do search all videos so star dot mp4 all videos are all audio files star dot wav all audio files are. star dot mp3 all files so this is one software that all of you must have otherwise you will keep struggling to search media where was that in your laptop correct so that's all for everything let's now come back to obs because See, I was telling you about everything. At the same time, I was recording my video. My video is ready now. Let's go back to OBS because OBS allow me to stop recording. So I'll click on stop recording and that's all. My video is recorded and I can share with any one of you right now. I don't have to wait for editing, mixing, this, that. No, it's here. Watch the video. Now, after minimizing, I am at everything. And I am now skipping this video. Finally, when I finished teaching, I came back to OBS and then stopped the, that part also captured. That's done. It's that easy. So I believe now you know how to make your screencasts. Correct. So when you know how to make your screencast, all I have to do now, I have to tell you how to make slide casts. Slide cast is what? Recording your slide with your voice. That's all. Okay. So I will do what? I'll ensure that the screen is selected. But in the back end, I will ensure that my slide is open. See the trick here. Slide is there on the complete screen. I am recording a screen. And making what slide cast? That's simple. Come back to OBS. Click on start recording. Minimize. Done. I am recording what a slide cast right now. So this is slide cast. Where you are recording your slides while explaining its content easiest and fastest way to create your educational content right now if you want to learn slide cast making in detail with all the small small tips then please watch this video 
otherwise everything i have already covered here in this session so right now slide is getting recorded and once your slide is slide cast is ready simply go back to obs click on stop recording and now go to show recordings and this is my slide cast see this one is my slide cast Slide. Where you are recording your slide. Then, I hope by now you have got the knowledge that was really required for you to make almost all basic type of educational video. Why I'm saying basic? Because I'm here to talk about the difficult type of videos. Let's now skip to difficult type of videos. So these are videos which require extra work on your part that's all okay so talking head if you noticed we have already talked about talking head why i put that in a difficult category because when you want to record your face you become little conscious at that time you think about putting some lights you think about doing some makeup you think about wearing good clothes that is why i put that in a difficult category in terms of obs it is as simple as utilizing your camera and putting that in that rectangle and finally record it with your phone let's now go to next which is khan academy style video again not difficult it is a tabletop video only but here rather than writing on a paper pen you are writing on some software for that you need a digital pen tablet you, if you have a digital pen tablet you are simply recording your screen with the same screen cast and finally writing on the screen explaining and obs will convert into what khan academy style videos then comes okay so before i end let me give you really good feature of obs okay without that this session will not be useful you have learned two very important thing today and these two things will lead you to make any kind of video i am now giving you the last very powerful feature of obs and that is known as mixing what is mixing let us say you want to record your face along with your slide for that a normal video editor will record you and your screen separately on two different cameras then on during the editing it will merge both of the uh, videos and finally produce a final outcome with the help of obs you can do it without a third person without expensive hardware without expensive software and you can do it right and by the now by now you must know how to do it i have added a screen let it be there all i will do right now is free my web camera good quality web camera from webinar okay i will use poor quality camera on my webinar screen so that good quality camera is free in the sources there is no restrictions on adding number of uh, sources that means at the same time i can also use video capture device and i can select camera that is available to me i can change its resolution i can do anything that i want to do for example i want this done now video is also available on it i will resize my video as per my convenience i'll put it anywhere on the screen again as per my convenience for example here i want to put it and finally i will hit recording now what is happening now my screen is getting recorded along with my video along with my audio and that is how i am merging multiple sources into one video and when i stop recording it will be one video only there are no two videos no three videos this is one video with my face on it along with the screen now, now my screen is getting recorded along with my video 
I believe many of you want to make this type of video. Before I end, I would like to show you much more of it. You want to record your screen along with your face. Let's start recording. Go to the software that you want to teach. That's all. Your screen, your face is getting recorded. Your screen is getting recorded. The software that you are teaching is getting recorded along with your mouse movement. Everything is getting recorded. Okay. So you don't have to worry about anything as of now. All your activities are getting recorded. That's how we are creating a screencast along with your talking head. Now, let's go to slide. And now, while you are presenting your slide, while OBS is recording your camera and screen, you are making what? Slide cast along with your talking head. And that is how you are imposing both video into one, making a final outcome. Okay. And now finally, when you are done, come back and click on stop recording. And that is how you create really professional video without help of any person, without buying expensive hardware and without editing. There is no post production work. Correct. Let's now see slide cast. Then, why not further complex it and make it really final outcome? I'll add two things here. I will add an image. And this image is what? Nothing but logo of my company. Isn't it? That's what we want. So I want a logo of my company. So logo is available here. I'll click on OK and I will put logo where I want it to put. For example, let's move my video here. Let's put logo here. And I will add one more text here. This is text. Here I will write my university's website and then click OK. I'll resize it, put it in correct size on a screen like this. That's all. Now I start recording and I am teaching a software. I'm teaching about a software without worrying about when will I put logo, where will I put logo, whether the size uh, will be appropriate if i'll get raw format or mp4 format no perfectly fine video with your company's logo with your company's website i am getting it similarly when i am talking about slide cast if i am on slide cast i am recording it with what with my video along with company's logo along with company's website address which is required for final publication finally i will go back and click on stop recording and that was the last output that we have produced today. I'll show you how it looks. See, logo is here. Company's name, uh, website address is coming here. My video is coming here. The screen is also getting recorded. No third person, no editing, nothing. This is final MP4 video. That's all. I have to say for today's session, I just hope that you explore OBS a lot and you will be able to create whatever you have in your mind. If you look at other teachers that how they are creating this kind of wonderful content, you can do the same with the knowledge that I have. On my YouTube channel, which is known as ET Mantra eLearning Solutions, all this information I have provided in complete detail. So I request you to please look at that, watch all the videos. If you have any problem, just let me know. I'll help you with my full potential and you should be able to make really good videos. That's all. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paul, uh, for such an exhaustive, uh, enriching, excellent session. You know, it was an eye opener for each one of us. And in such a very simple, lucid uh, presentation style, you have made everyone to understand uh, that what this and this has truly been uh, not only an enriching, but also an inspiring one because you had shown all kinds of possibilities, infinite possibilities, you know, which are there in the software and also the other one that you referred about everything. My only request before we make the, we remain much grateful to you for your time and efforts and it speaks volumes of your commitment, you know, and uh, also because as you said that you have the CT mantra that you also have uh, as your YouTube channel and uh, educating, knowledge sharing, you know, that you are doing, letting everyone to know what you hold and expertise on. It's, it's really commendable. We, it's truly a praiseworthy thing and we uh, greatly appreciate and value also your sentiments that you really want to reach out to the academicians, to the educationalists and uh, to do the things in the best of the ways, you know, and it's making the best use of the technologies and that's for uh, serving the society in a most, uh, you know, uh, in, in the best of the way. So thank you very much, Dr. Paul. My only quick uh, question before we make the things, you know, open, um, the floor open for questions is, can you, would you like to throw some light about the installation part of this? You know, especially though uh, Dr. Vinay had, uh, you know, mentioned about it initially, but a little bit of information from you would also be something that our attendees here would like to know. So that's our platforms on which they do. And if you can just can quickly can just show it to them from where they need to download any kind of, you know, do's and don'ts that they need to keep it in mind well before they do that. And do they really require a very specialized uh, IT, you know, expertise, you know, uh, to be there with them? Because when we talk about the academic institutions, we do have the institutions of all kinds, you know, across the country. And when we really want to make the best use of the technology, we also want to see to it that it's something which can be easily be uh, implemented also. So would you like to throw some light? You know, we would be really grateful to you for your time on that. Sure, sure. So first of all, uh, there is nothing complex in installing of OBS. It's absolutely simple of software, the way you use Install other software, same way you can install OBS. Only thing that you need to know about OBS is this is the correct website. Don't go to other websites. Okay. And because OBS provides you APIs, that means developers can make many things out of it. There are many software which are using OBS in the back and developers are putting a huge amount on top of it and selling it to the professors. Please don't uh, become fool okay why because obs will update its release but they will not okay so only thing that you need to know is obsproject.com this is the correct website once you are on this website you will see options to download this and there are three operating systems on which obs studio works so it's not like that you have mac OS that you can't do it or if you have linux you can't use obs no on three all three of the operating systems which are most popular one you can use obs simply click on the correct uh, operating system it will download a file for you which will be an exe file when you get this exe file all you have to do is click on this file and follow the instructions usually clicking on the next 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 and finally it will be installed once obs is installed you can open it simply by searching on your app panel and when you click on this it will open OBS. it's that simple nothing complex at all but i'm glad that you asked this question to me because it gives me an opportunity to talk about some other softwares that i mentioned for example i also mentioned about uh, everything for that there is a website you all must know about this website the website is known as ninite.com okay please go to ninite.com Accept OBS, it will solve all your problems. In ninite.com, you have to select few softwares if you are really interested in creating video content. The first one and most useful is K-Lite Codex. What does it do? Whatever it do, it's not visible to you. Okay, I can just give you a scenario. Any type of video you are playing or you have tried to play in the previous dates you were not able to play them because some of the codecs were missing 
when you install klite codex there is no codex that is missing from your windows laptop and now you can play any video without any problem please do not use vlc media player our government has already mentioned about problems related with vlc media player so never install it just install klite codex it will help you a lot then install audacity it will help you in podcasting and editing your audio then you must install handbrake why because handbrake allow you to compress your video in a smaller size and send it to various platform with less bandwidth finally you must install zip 7 zip why because any kind of compressed file this is a free software all the software which i am mentioning here are free softwares you don't have to pay for them at all 7 zip allow you to extract any zip format finally you should uh click on green shot green shot green shot allow you to take a screenshot of your screen from any place any place in the sense if you see i have green shot here if i want to capture a particular region i simply click on it and i can capture just this part that's all i can now copy it to keyboard clipboard and send it to the person okay so that's why this software you must install and everything don't forget everything everything is available here okay finally when you select to click on get your nineite it will give you only one exe file all you have to do is just click on that exe file okay and then it will do the rest you don't have to click on next next for many times in order to install these all software just one click and it will update all the softwares or install if they are not available on your laptop and that is how your laptop will become multimedia friendly you should be able to work on any multimedia file after you install all these softwares that's all ma'am thank you thank you very much dr paul the more we uh, time we are having with you the more we are able to explore further not only about the softwares but also the kind of and marvelous uh, Uh, you know expertise that you hold on this entire subject just quickly wanting to ask you have you because i have seen your profile and you have been one of the you know an academician who has prolifically been writing also a lot the publications and that uh, that's really something commendable just wanting to ask you quickly anything because you specialize in educational technology for open source software the open source softwares which are available for the world uh, of education have you written any recent paper highlighting especially the open source software we are all discussing about in for last one and a half hour but have you written any paper on that you may feel that especially our attendees over here may like to you know have a look at it okay uh, so my research work is basically on using storytelling in education girls education uh and um, vernacular medium basically the language related barrier that people face in academics okay my research is in that direction so where i keep talking about pedagogies and framework that one should know when they are providing it so girls education is really different than boys education and there are certain things that one need to consider so my research work if you are talking about publication in terms of research then they are in that direction pedagogical direction they Can are not just in, uh, Yeah. Dr. Paul, something about this digital storytelling, you know, because uh, even the, uh, for that matter, educationalists are really wanting to. We won't take much of your time. We know that we have already taken more than fifteen uh, minutes, but we really want to make, if the time permits, if you, if you can just can give us another fifteen minutes time, just a quick, you know, little bit about this digital storytelling uh, that all of us are able to hear it. but how really some of the best practices that you are following the uh, not necessarily only at an it university but maybe you know because you hold an expertise in that because this is a platform wherein we have got not only our own library professionals we also have the faculty members we have the academicians the decision makers so we just want to make the best use of your availability here and if you can just can uh, say a bit about it that would matter a lot or to you dr sure. paul thank you very much ma'am for asking this so because you asked about uh, digital storytelling i would like to show you one example 
I also skipped the video, but I'll tell you where to find that video. You have to go to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash learn by watch. Here in videos, if you search for saturated solution, you have to simply search for saturated solution, you will find these videos. Okay. These are my storytelling videos. I mean, basically videos where I use stories as a means to teach about a subject. Okay. So uh, you can see good number of views there, but that's fine. I'll simply play this video. I don't know if you are able to listen to the audio also or not. Okay. But I'll play this video. Obviously you have to bear with the advertisements. VP of a ketchup company. So while the advertisement is playing, I would like to tell you why I'm showing this video because that's the first video that I created I using storytelling to teach a concept of class six uh, to kids. So please have a look. Whether a glass of water can dissolve any amount of sugar, what's there to check? Quite a lot of sugar can be dissolved in a glass of water. I don't think so. Okay then, go ahead and test it. We shall find out the truth. This glass contains water. Why? This bowl has sugar. Only this much sugar. Bring some more. Let this much sugar get dissolved in the water first. Then I will bring some more. Okay, let's start. Put a spoonful of sugar into the water, miss. See, a spoonful of sugar completely dissolved in a glass of water. To be it, we shall add more sugar now. Means keep adding more sugar in the glass. Okay. So wonderful. Hmm. Thank you. So this was the first example. So you can see we made it five years ago. Okay. So five years ago I made it, and that was one of the video that then bring me lot of clients, lot of academic agencies, NGOs for the development of their educational content. One that I really proud after that. This was the first experiment, which is TikTok Learn. Okay, it, that's Hindi. Um, TikTok learn or something like that. Yeah, that was the TikTok. Sorry, not talk. TikTok learn Hindi. If you look at it, many of this, like this one, is created by. Uh, actually, there was a means I am not allowed to talk about, but these are something which are created under my guidance. So, scripting to finally. 
creating stories and if you now because that was the first video still then that was created three years back this one you see the difference in quality projection presentation look at it and similarly similarly i have created many after that means we didn't stop because the experiment was really successful the latest one um, we have created i yeah it's here this one so we are we talk about uh, how to make a rainbow and this the quality is really surprising so uh, this was basically to talk about uh, colors so finally at the end she made a see by a prism and made a rainbow in the house correct so this is how the story goes so storytelling basically if i say it can be divided into few steps the first and very important step and that where teacher need to be there is a script writing so as i told in the beginning itself whatever you do your production quality will improve just by pouring more money but there is one thing where money will not help you and that there comes content quality correct so and content quality is the most important thing if you are talking about wrong concept does not really matter if you are using a 1 lakh rupees camera or 50 lakh rupees camera isn't it so here a script writing teacher need to learn because they need to learn how to talk about their content in interesting manner so that it's it can be understood even by a five year old so there comes a storytelling where you are actually portraying the characters then writing their dialogues then thinking how um, they will look on the screen how they will move and all of this after scripting scripting comes voice over so voice over should not be done by teachers it means obviously if you are good at voice over and you are training yeah please do it okay otherwise simply outsource it then comes animation and animation is very difficult part if you talk about any developer who is in pune mumbai delhi they will simply give you a budget of 11000 rupees per minute okay and that's what happened with me when i was talking about creating my first video which is saturated solution they simply asked 12000 rupees for a minute video so it was around 5 minute long script and i was like how how i can give 60000 rupees for one video because it's academics now i have to make whole lot of videos so that so then i explored and come across one software that is known as beyond v y o n d beyond is very simple easy to use software everyone should know how to use it it's very very easy and in fact i am teaching it to teachers to students to academicians if any of your teacher any students want to learn it just come to me so i take around 15 to 20 days to teach this software so in beyond if you have a mastery you can actually create your stories without learning animation this is simple absolutely simple drag and drop animation software but you can achieve what you have in your mind like the examples that i have presented i was able to portray my ideas in a beautiful animation and beyond because i used beyond beyond understand what i am trying to do so what they did they actually put one of my video in their showcase so if they have showcase here i have to check they must have a showcase okay so beyond actually put one of my video in their showcase as a medium mm, so it's here no learn by watch yeah yes here no sorry sorry it's not here i have to check 
बियॉन्ड Kachipal, a couple of questions I could now see. Yes, Sorry yes. for uh, the intrusion. Yes, uh, but we could see that you know the outstanding work uh, that you have been uh, contributing to this entire educational sector and the state of the uh, art technologies and more so the open source technologies. They, that makes the things you know. uh you know it's it's for everyone and everyone should come forward in embracing this technology and uh, and you have truly inspired everyone uh, with this uh, kind of a you know wonderful impactful presentation that you have made today as we could see that the more we are interacting with you the more we are able to you know uh, discover many new your tools so uh, we really look forward to having yet another uh, opportunity to once again interact with you and uh, because we could see that uh, nothing should stop you in uh, letting the people to know so so many things that you have done you have demonstrated and and uh, there would be many takers today i think you know after the session you are going to you have kept them engaged not only during the session but i'm pretty confident that you have made them now a more engaged uh, for the days and months to come because they would really like to now discover and experience it themselves and to start working on it thank you so very much dr paul i could see that there are a couple of questions you know which are being there and with your permission maximum 5 to 7 minutes we will take we know that uh, already we have taken much of your time just a quick one uh, questions because i could see it's all our chat boxes being flooded with the messages uh, one of the thing uh, which is being asked by sana ki do i is so how to edit the videos using you know our open uh, broadcaster software uh, how can we edit a video which has already been made uh, asked by sana ki do i and i think many of our attendees may like to also know about it i see see first of all uh, it's my experience that you should not think about editing video okay sounds really, really weird but i am working with educational video since last 13 years and this is my conclusion okay and how you can do it plan your video okay in advance plan your video for everything for example what will be the slide what will you say where will your logo go where will be the company's name or website go address will go plan for everything if you are not planning then you will do a lot of work during editing time okay first let me tell you why you should not edit videos because recording a video may take you somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes because you are an expert in your education so you don't have to really rehearse the content you have your slide ready recording will take 15 to 20 minutes but editing that video will take a good amount of time first of all you don't have a skill of editing okay i am not saying you can't learn i am simply saying you at present you don't have a skill to edit your videos so you have to learn those skills second you don't have a really good laptop if you are editing your video you need a laptop that cost minimum 1.25 lakh if you are teaching something you just need a laptop that cost 40 to 60000 so you are spending more money into that job role that is not suitable for you correct so you should spend more money into content rather than buying certain kind of hardware so that's why i am stopping third thing is in academics you take one semester take one subject you have to teach one subject in entire semester let's say you decide that you will put all your content in public or let's say to your students for this semester for one subject only it's going to take 40 hours to deliver the lectures 40 hours if you are delivering how much how many hours are required to edit those videos then how many are required to produce this video now you simply calculate is it viable to edit all these videos within a semester if you say it's viable will you be editing the videos or would you like to spend more time into perfecting your content that's it okay so i say please don't do it but still if you want to do it let me tell you one software name unfortunately that software is not open source okay that software is a paid software but good thing is that you have to pay only once to use it forever okay little cost here you it will cost you somewhere around 24 25000 rupees but that software is especially meant for educators okay simple to use 
there is no complexity it's linear video editor and that editor is known as camtasia studio please write the name it's camtasia c a m t a s i a i will also write it here yeah, on the screen i'll share my screen tasker is it yeah camtasia this is the software camtasia yes this is one stop solution for video uh, educational video creators it has a screen recorder it has video editor it allow you to create your podcast everything it is there okay so if you are really if you really want to go into that direction use this software if you think that you would not like to invest 20 30000 into an editor then there is one open source software da vinci resolve and don't simply go by this fact that this is a open source software this is the most powerful software and it is industry standard also many companies that you have liked okay in from hollywood are edited with da vinci resolve it is absolutely free no cost at all its color grading is top notch this is absolutely free it will not buy any it will not charge you anything don't go with this this is for a studio when you are want to connect hardware this is free no icon will come it will never ask for money and it is industry standard so this is one software that i prefer i recommend if you are really looking for open source and free option but as i told you this is not meant for studios this is not meant for teachers it's meant for studios so it is really complex to use another software that i prefer comparatively easy has less features is known as open shot video editor which is open source and free editor available for linux mac as well as for windows so these are three software that you can write one is complex two are easy out of which one is open source don't have many features one is paid but has all the features and especially meant for teachers so i hope it answers your query uh second thing also yes. oh, okay so we were discussing about storytelling thing and i found this video so beyond actually listed our video in their showcase okay so at that time and it was really a proud moment for us because that was just an experiment we were doing finally it was accepted so i hope the editing question has answered yeah. and yes yes dr paul you have got the perfect answers for all the queries that we can say that you know you are a huge repository of you know means anything and everything you have got a tool that is on which you have worked you know you you have you hold in such a great experience uh, and that comes with a lot much of conviction so thank you very much for this is indeed so wonderful so we started off with the you know open broadcaster but now we can see that you have really opened up all together uh, you know the new avenues for everyone to explore to come forward and to make the best use of them and uh, and it's it's really marvelous it's something you know greatly admired you know of your huge expertise that you hold on the subject just the last question that you know because i could see that you know we can uh, we would just like to request to all our attendees here we are almost reaching towards uh, two hours you know time that we have uh, stealed uh, you know from dr yogendra paul's academic uh, work schedules and this is just to ask uh, we have our colleague from jnu uh, you know deputy librarian dr bibhuti bhushan patnaik who is uh, would like to see that can we think about having some uh, in person workshops you know some hands on workshops so since nit the leader in the it you know for the education sector right from 1980s onwards so and being at uh, nit university do you have any plans you know to uh, transfer this this knowledge sharing transfer by holding some uh, workshops uh, maybe at the university maybe somewhere else have you ever tried you know doing that uh, dr paul yes yes so i have taken many session personally during my uh, tenure in iit bombay cdec as well as somewhere else also so i have taken sessions in almost all uh, top colleges whether it's iits or um, bit or um, means I, any any name i believe 
you think so uh, you're going taken... to be flooded with you're going to be flooded with the queries coming in you know because we could see that already it has generated lot much of interest and everyone we may like to you know uh, get benefited with your expertise and may like to and that's uh, i think you know there is a greater need you know even to have a, some kind of a specialized group you know wherein we can have more better kind of you know and some of the test beds some of the institutions which may like to come forward and adopting it and train the trainer kind of and then it will be very happy to have i think you know we can definitely can explore those possibilities with an it university where we can think about holding it uh, you know such kind of programs uh, it was truly a great so I would just like to firstly tell it to our colleagues, you know, who are online that because of paucity of time, we are not able to really take any further questions. Uh, but Dr. Paul has been very kind and generous in um, sharing his contact details with each one of you. You're most welcome to write to him. You can write to us. We will be more than happy to forward all those communications to Dr. Paul. And I, we, we have truly felt, you know, uh, we, we never had expected that, you know, that this is how much we are going to cover up today in this one hour session, which has lasted, you know, we have taken a double of that time, but you hold such a great expertise on the subject, means educational technology, you are the one who is a doer who has practically has implemented and, uh, and for everything you have got a tool and that to the best part is that open source technologies i uh, need not to invest in in money but and as you have rightly said and i think that's a strong message that you have given to the library professionals and for that matter for the educators and everyone that we need to keep ourselves we always think about the technologies that we are using but one of the things that we should always start a journey with is this content creation and wherein the library professionals has to put in their heart, mind, and soul to see to it, and in in, in a close coordination, in a in a kind of a, you know collaborative manner, have to see to it that firstly to focus on the content that what we want to capture and what we want to pass on, you know, to our. Uh, uh, to our um, students. So it's very important that we should also, besides just not looking and get carried away by the technology, we should keep ourselves focused. So there's out of the five C's we talk about. So the C for a content, you know, uh, that's going to content is the king. And yes, we do have a connectivity. We have not many other respects, but yes, we need to keep ourselves focused on creating a, uh, the best quality content and which would uh, be uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, the most, uh, the highlight always has to be on the content, you know, technologies are there to help out, open source technologies are there. We cannot thank you enough, uh, Dr. Yuginder Paul cannot say that how much uh, uh, benefited each one of us have felt, even, you know, you have truly inspired everyone have opened up, it is it all together opening up a new world, you know, to all our academicians, all our educators, you know, that yes, technologies are there and you are the one who has shown them that you yourself have um, implemented with your team members and others and uh, there, there should be you know many more who would like to you know get into these unventured uh, lands and they, they they will get you know truly benefited out of it and yes for everything there are tools available it's a matter of putting in your efforts in that and uh, and not to you know uh, uh, think about that you know it is an open source and you have shown that how impactful these tools are uh, we would uh, like to you know really express a very warm sincere gratitude to you for taking out time for us and for sharing your huge vast expertise on this subject and we really look forward to having uh, many more opportunities not just simply yet another so today it seems that we have made a big link in uh, knowing about you and knowing about the vast uh, experience that you hold on the subject and that yes uh, that you have implemented and have uh, seeing is believing so you have shown that yes this is being done and there should be many more who should come forward and uh, uh, be in that uh, you know uh, be the proud uh, users of those technologies on behalf of delnet uh, and on behalf of each one of us dr yoginder we would like to present this memento uh, with warm uh, gratitude to you, a great admiration for you, and wishing you the very best. You are already you know, immensely contributing to uh, the world of education by bringing in the technologies. We wish you the very best, and it has been a proud honor and privilege for us to have you on this platform today. So this is for you, and, uh, and we would like to, you know, we would be very happy that in some of your videos that you make, if this takes, you know, 
the you be in the foreground and if it goes into the background we will feel very happy about it so thank you, you so very much <laughs> thank you thank you very much thank you dr paul also paul. i would like to also, we would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Vinay Kanthola, a long time wonderful professional colleague, you know, since 1996, 95, 96 have been having. This is for you, Dr. Vinay, and thank you so much for introducing us to Dr. Yogendra Paul, a great um, uh, professional, a great um, expert, you know, and uh, it would not have been uh, made possible without you being there, you know. Uh, thank you so very much. This is for you, Vinay. Uh, with not much of appreciation for all the sincere work that you have been doing and for being such a support uh, not only for this program but yes for Delnet over the years no words can express you know how much appreciated we always feel you know thank you very much for so wonderfully coordinating uh, this program and i look forward to coming down uh, to nit university uh, somewhere in july so it would be a pleasure also uh, to meet in person both you dr uh, paul and also to dr ken fuller uh, we would also like to once again on behalf of Dell, i would like to express our warm sincere gratitude to the entire management of an iit university who have been very generous and supportive uh, in joining hands with delnet in organizing this webinar session and uh, we would like to thank each one of our attendees who have joined us from around 20 countries this afternoon it's an afternoon Noon and morning somewhere and evening and even a late night you know in the regions and yes that has been made possible uh, with the technology in place but yes we truly appreciate and admire your own interest in learning about the new technologies we all are there together for a common uh, cause the cause the purpose remains the same you know for each one of us bringing in the light illuminating uh, the path of our information seekers illuminate it you know uh, and enlightening them uh, using the technologies and we should always remember that we need to collaborate ourselves it's not only establishing connections but we need to also you know establish uh, more stronger collaborations uh, coming together and uh, and that that's the strength that's what makes the things you know more workable that makes the things more stronger so it has been a wonderful honor and pleasure for delnet as well as an it university in organizing this webinar session and we really look forward you know to be back again uh, soon i would just like to quickly would like to mention and request each one of you to block two dates in the month of june one is on 16th of june delnet in collaboration with cisco uh, we'll be organizing a session from three o'clock to four o'clock, which will be on ransomware, facts, threats, and mitigation. 16th June, three o'clock, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. In collaboration with Cisco, we are organizing the session. And then on 24th of June, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., we are going to have a webinar session on NLP, natural language processing, humanizing information retrieval and we would be having our distinguished speaker you know who would be from Anna university joining in who are exclusively working on nlp natural language processing so please do kindly block two dates in the month of june which we're starting off tomorrow is the first of june so the, for the month of june two webinar sessions 16th june on ransomware the session being organized by delnet in collaboration with cisco and uh, on 24th of june you will be notified about it and we would truly be grateful for your active participation your presence you know which we greatly value you know always uh, before uh, we conclude i would also like to place on records my very sincere appreciation uh, for my colleagues uh, mr kushal giri goswami who has been technically coordinating all our webinar sessions for all his tireless work and seeing to it that we are able to you know convene these uh, webinar sessions in the most effective and efficient manner my very special thanks to him also i would like to thank uh, uh, my colleague mrs ranjana who helps in uh, making uh, in seeing to it that each one of you are being notified well in time for the registrations uh, we remain truly appreciative of the participation of each one of you would like to request that whenever uh, 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 one more thing I would just like to mention because there have been a request. All uh, the entire uh, video recording of the session will be uploaded on the Delnet's YouTube channel called WebView. 
web view we request you please do kindly subscribe to the channel so that as soon as we upload the video you will be notified about it so we will be uploading this by tomorrow morning and you can very well can and i think everyone would like to really again uh, learn unlearn and relearn the things you know and uh, and to get benefited yet again and uh, also we would like to inform you that by Five o'clock, you are going to receive the certificate of participation for attending today's webinar session. We have always, always appreciated and admire your being there with us. You always inspire us and inspire us to keep on organizing these webinar sessions. So whenever you receive an intimation about a webinar session, please help us in reaching out to as many as professional colleagues, you know. And so feel free, you know, in uh, making that particular invite. It's an invite on behalf of Delnet. Uh, please do come kindly forward that to among your own groups, among in your own regions. And we will really be happy enough if you help us in broadening up this entire network of, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, helping us in this knowledge sharing environment and many more takers, many more beneficiaries to happen in that process. Uh, we would uh, remain truly appreciative of your kind gesture. So with this, we would like to close and would just like to request Vinay if he may like to say something as it has been a true pleasure and honor for Delnet in collaborating with NIT University in doing, in organizing the session. Uh, Vinay, would you like to say something? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, once again, I would like to uh, uh, thank you for providing this uh, wonderful opportunity. And I would like to thanks also the participants because I, I just I was watching that lots of participants were there and they were, you know, and the uh, thanks to the uh, professor uh, Paul because he generated energy and because and it's still uh, because lots of questions were unanswered. And uh, so there, when someone was, I think uh, Dr. Vibhuti was asking for, you know, some workshops. So, because uh, uh, we are, you know, very soon we are going to organize, you know, two, three days workshop on uh, open source uh, software. Because then that would focus on the education, learning uh, technologies. So uh, definitely we'll notify within two or three months. So, and uh, in Dr. Uh, beside Dr. Parth, there will be uh, two more faculty members and that will be, you know, uh, sharing their knowledge along with him. So this is what uh, I would like to uh, share. And thank you very much you know, for providing this opportunity. Thank you, Vinay. Thank you so very much for uh, your support. Uh, and with this, we are on now concluding uh, today's uh, wonderful webinar session. All of us, each one of us, have truly felt enriched, enlightened, and also inspired enough to come forward in using the open source technologies, which are meant for making a very radical change, uh, you know, in our education sector. And I think each one of us should make the attempts in a most in a collaborative manner, in a network manner, uh, to contribute, you know, to the society. Uh, with this, we uh, are now closing today's webinar session, and we look forward to seeing you back on 16th of June, three o'clock, uh, you know, wherein we are going to have a session on ransomware that we are going to do in collaboration with Cisco and also on 24th of June on natural language processing. Dr. Paul has come into the frame. I, we were missing you because uh, the, the, we, it is it is you, you know, who has really energized this entire, you know, thing has made, you know, the session so impactful, such an impressive talk that you have given. And we wish you the very best. It has been truly a memorable day for us, where we have been able to discover such a very fine, uh, you know, professional colleague who has immensely been contributing. We wish you the very best, and we really look forward to having many more opportunities uh, to interact further with you, Dr. Paul. And you have been really, very a person who is really wanting to sensitize to the core uh, everyone whosoever is, you know, wanting to contribute in some ways constructive manner thank you very much indeed you know we will, we can never thank you enough it's a it's a very uh, we, we cannot do that short of vocabulary short of the expression that how grateful we have felt with your presence but it has truly been uh, you know a great honor for us to know about you about the wonderful work that you are doing it and we really wish uh, you know many more uh, you know recognitions and uh, the great work that you are doing it wishing you all the very best and this is not only from us but this is from each one of us i could see that 
you know, I would like to, you know, send it across to you, the entire, uh, this chat box, you know, wherein everyone is in great appreciation, you know, uh, of uh, your wonderful work that you're doing at the time that you have been able to give it to us. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much, Benay. Thank you very much indeed. And a big thank you to each one of you for making this afternoon a very special afternoon, an engaging afternoon, and an energizing afternoon, an enlightening one. And we wish you the best of the times ahead. Stay happy, stay blessed, and most importantly, do stay connected. We really look forward to having you back again on 16th of June at three o'clock. It's a proud honor and privilege always to be there, you know, with to have each one of you with us. Thank you very much for making this journey of library networking indeed a very wonderful and a beautiful journey. Thank you very much. May God bless each one of you. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Yogi Bachi. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vinay. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you, everyone. For thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.